I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX. Hey everybody, so it wasn't that long ago that I did a video talking about why it's important that if you want a desktop PC that's easily upgradable and can be easily serviced in the future, why you should go with a custom built system. And that is because newer OEM computers, they are the, the, the manufacturers like Dell and HP, they're like, the heck with the standard to call it ATX, let's do things our own way. So, in the previous video I talked about how OEM machines over time went from being computers that you could easily repair or upgrade using off-the-shelf components from Newegg or computer shops like the power supply unit, motherboards, things like that, to these proprietary pieces of garbage like the system on the right here. I recently got this in, the computer on the right, which of course the power supply has failed most likely because it's missing from the system. And of course now I finally have a nice sample to compare with. So we have this e-machine system on the left from the early mid 2000s. That's a typical e-machines design from 2002 to 2006, that era. Um, the e-machine systems from 2007 up to I think probably the end of e-machines. Um, they were pretty much very upgradable systems that you could really use the case to just build your own system in if you wanted to. And believe me, I've used e-machine cases a lot over the years to do a completely rebuild systems and do custom builds because, I mean, aside from a few things like the old non-SDHC card reader and the kind of well proprietary style face plates which you can swap over to a replacement drive provided meets the uh, provided it's the same brand um, e-machines cases they're really they're really nice to build in the, this is a next gen style e-machines case the newer e-cooper model e-machines cases uh, they did away with the uh, face plates on the drive. They use standard uh, face plate drives that are hidden, kind of like older HP uh, cases from the mid 2000s. And their card readers, I believe, are also STHC compliant. So overall, the e machines, I mean, they were uh, they were easily they were easily upgradable, and even like Dell Dimension systems, like let's say for example the Dimension 2400, the gray Dimension towers prior to the BTX style Dells like that one over there, those two were pretty much um, you could, if, if something like the power supply failed, you could put in a uh, off-the-shelf replacement. Now even a system like that, still even though the power supply was a bit bigger than standard size like that right there, you can still install one. Uh, you can still install a replacement unit like that, and then the uh, computer was ATX compliant as far as power connections goes. Motherboards, however, um, on those you could not, of course, find an off-the-shelf replacement. But the older dimensions from the uh, early to mid 2000s were, for the most part, um, you could replace motherboards with whatever. Um, I've actually. I actually did a custom build in a Dimension case a long time ago. HP cases from the early to uh, well, early to you know, early 2000s to I want to say the early 2010s. Those were also examples of computers that you could totally rebuild and use off-the-shelf retail parts. So that aside, let's go ahead and have a look at this e-machines system. It has a standard micro ATX motherboard. It has a standard form factor ATX power supply. Those are the two key things. So, again, these older computers that were made by the big brands like HP, Dell, uh, some Dells, E-Machines, Gateway, those were relatively easy to service with off-the-shelf parts. You did not have to go to the manufacturer for uh, parts 
I mean, you could you could upgrade a motherboard, replace a motherboard or a power supply with an off-the-shelf part just fine. Now, let's talk about this computer over here. So, this is a computer that was basically written off as scrap, and that's how I ended up with it. Um, I got this from the same guy, a friend of mine who got me the Autoplex 390s. Which I may I may talk about a Autoplex 390 in the video too, but um, this is an Autoplex 3050. So, yep, Autoplex 3050. It's relatively recent too. It's a seventh gen Intel i5, and you can see that is not a standard motherboard. That is a proprietary Dell motherboard. It uses a proprietary power supply unit. You can't just go to Best Buy and get a replacement supply or Newegg. Now, Newegg may carry replacement power supplies, but they're, they were specifically designed for this machine. And we'll talk about that in a moment. So, items like the processor, which are socketed, provide us a socketed CPU, the memory, the hard drive for SSD, those items, um, let's say if your motherboard or your power supply unit fails, um, you could pull those items and rebuild the system by finding a compatible socket motherboard and ATX power supply. And, and of course, you could rebuild the system. But this case right here, um, the only thing you can do with it, um, you can upgrade the processor provided it meets provide a motherboard is compatible with it. You could upgrade the memory. You could add storage like an SSD or um, or what have you. And also, uh, these older machines, or excuse me, these newer machines, I'm sorry. This is one thing I can't stand about these newer computers. Yes, I understand optical drives are kind of a thing of the past. They're not quite as relevant today as they were 10 years ago, 15 years ago. But if you're going to include an optical drive, how hard is it to include a five and a quarter inch quality DVD drive? Not this cheap piece of crap, piece of garbage laptop optical drive. I mean, you see how skinny this thing is, right? It, I mean, you, you, you sacrifice build quality for something like this. You sacrifice build quality to make something that's skinny and compact to fit inside of a laptop, a notebook. I mean, look at all the space that's left in here. They could have easily put a five and a quarter inch drive in this thing, but chose not to because this was likely cheaper. You know how much a five and a quarter inch DVD burner costs last I checked? Between 20 to $30. I mean, that's not like they're a whole bunch of money. <laughs> and that's, that's just my opinion. Um, if you're going to include optical disk drive, include a real one, not this laptop piece of garbage. Um, and the thing about this motherboard is, okay, like I was saying, RAM, CPU, storage, you can generally upgrade those items on a computer like this, but you can't swap out the motherboard for an upgraded motherboard. If the power supply fries, you got to go through Dell for a replacement power supply, and that power supply will likely be a cheap piece of garbage that is marked up and sold at an exorbitant price. You know, so, for example, I did look up the price of a replacement power supply unit for this computer. Guess how much it cost? Oh, wait, first, it's 180 watts output. $89.99. Yeah, guys. You could pick up probably a 750 watt power supply. A good 750 watt power supply for that cost. Um, that's, a, a, a course from a typical brand like Corsair or Thermaltake, a good quality ATX power supply for the same price. But for this thing, you got to spend that kind of money to get a measly 180 watt supply. And in that case, you can forget about putting a high-end graphics card in one of these things because of course the power supply will limit you on that. So there you have it. Um, and also, as you can see, all the front panel stuff, the like the uh, headphone jack, the USB ports, the card reader, if equipped, this one does not seem to have it. Um, it might actually be on the bottom side of the circuit board. No, no, it doesn't have it. Um, but those items are actually integrated into the motherboard. Yeah. So if your USB ports mess up, well, 
and you're gonna be replacing the motherboard just because of the USB ports. See, this is this is it's, it's garbage. I can't stand these kind of computers. Um, these these newer computers are basically throwaway garbage. Um, when they fail, you can salvage items like the uh, processor, the RAM, things like that. So it looks like we will get to salvage the i5 CPU off of this off of this motherboard, and I could perhaps use that to build another system. But I mean, come on, it's it's ridiculous. So and you can see it's just the thing is so freaking cheaply made. Matter of fact, look here, I'll show you a video from last year, me unboxing a Dell system at my place of work. The blasted thing had a loose screw in it, new out of the box. So not only do you have crappy quality as far as the computer itself, proprietary design that's not easily serviceable, um, like your motherboard fries or your power supply fries, you're basically throwing away the whole system. Um, not only do you have crappy design and build quality, well, you have crappy uh, quality control because, uh, I mean, stuff like that. It, there's a loose screw inside the system. So... I'm telling you guys, it's, it is a disgrace how just just how much the build quality has gone downhill with OEM computers. It's it is it is appalling to say the least. Um, and of course, this e machine system here doesn't a lot of the parts in it are not original. Um, but of course, e machine they had they had their issues, um, particularly with the power supply, um, the Best Tech power supplies, which Best Tech otherwise. Their units are actually pretty decent. Um, I actually use them for rebuilds. I do have to replace caps once in a while, but Best Tech did release a back a, a flawed design unit called the ATX 2512E, which had a defective 5 volt standby design. And when the capacitors failed, not if, but when the capacitors failed, um, the power supply was self-destructing, take the motherboard with it. Um, that was a big problem for e-machines back in the day. They were otherwise great computers. Um, and again, they had a solid case, a solid platform that you could upgrade and do all sorts of stuff with. But these newer things here, I'm telling you, they're, they're, they're junk. So it's one thing when you have, of course, an e-machines. For, for example, again, e-machines, they had issues with their power supplies. It's one thing when you have issues with uh, items or components that are standardized design components where you could go to... Best Buy or Newegg or Amazon and easily pick up an ATX power supply and install it. And stuff like this, I mean, when it's proprietary, Dell or HP, they can just charge whatever they want. And I'm and to be honest, um, particularly with Dell, Dell is is definitely um, they they've definitely been making stuff proprietary for years. But from around 2001, yeah, say 2000, 2001. 2002 up through probably the mid 2010s their computers like critical items like the power supply and things like that um, were you could you could replace them with a standard power supply um, there were some years again like of course those computers and also Doctorbucks 390s where certain things did not quite meet the standard of kind of their own design so, for example, as I mentioned, I will show you a 390. So, this Octoplex 390 right here um, has had the power supply unit replaced. Um, it's got this insignia from Best Buy. 450 watt supply because the original um, Chickeny Power power supply um, took a dump, like most of them have. But, I mean, while the case is mostly standard ATX, uh, there's a couple of things, like the front panel buttons and LEDs that are not standardized. Now, if you really wanted to, um, you most likely could splice and wire those components into a standard motherboard front panel header connection. The USB and the audio connections are standard. So, I mean, if you if you really wanted to do if you really wanted to use an Octoplex 390 case for a rebuild, you could. You just have to do a little bit of rewiring on the uh, on the front panel LED and button, but I mean, this is it. There were some 
there were some years with Dell that they kind of did things their own way. But HP and the machines, like those brands, for example, um, back in the day, they were pretty much standardized. Um, but these new things here, again, like I say, it's it's a dis it's a disgrace. It really is a disgrace. Um, I can I can imagine that uh, you know, of course, as someone who works on computers, um, when someone brings me something like this, and let's say the power supply is gone, um, it's the last thing I want to have to tell someone is um, we're going to have to replace your computer, or we're going to, have to pretty much build you a new system. Um, however, I can reuse your processor and your RAM and your SSD. Whereas with something like this, um, you'd be like, oh, I can, we can um, replace your motherboard or your power supply. So I know this video is kind of all over the place, but I'm sure you can probably see my frustration with, with um, what has happened with OEM computers over the years. And again, um, I did want to make this video since I now have a sample, a uh, piece of garbage sample here from Dell from, from the modern era. To, to compare with an older system. Um, and again, of course, with uh, Windows 11, Microsoft and their um, elite class minimum system requirements for Windows 11, they're trying to push people to buy new PCs, and it's probably, um, they say it's for security reasons, blah, blah, blah. I think it's more of a backroom deal with the OEMs to uh, try to boost PC sales. <laughs> because... Um, the thing is, there are workarounds to install Windows 11 on just about anything, um, going all the way back to socket AM2 on AMD or socket 775 on Intel. Windows 11 will run a lot more stuff than the Elite Class requirements um, specify, but the Elite Class member requirements um, will generally stop you from installing Windows 11 on anything older than. 8th gen Intel Core or Ryzen 2000 series of New York to AMD. Think about it, guys. So, this thing here, even though this thing is not that old, even though, yeah, even this machine does not meet the Elite class requirements because it's a 7th gen Intel Core series processor. Yeah, guys, overall, I'm really disappointed with what's going, what has happened with the OEMs over the years. They, they're going back to doing their own things, doing things their own way. That way, when critical parts break, in order to use the, in order to salvage a computer, you got to go through them for parts. But generally, when you're you're seeing the cost of eighty dollars for a really crappy power supply, or who knows how much for a motherboard, chances are likely you're going to just chunk the computer and go buy a new one. <laughs> so, anyways, um, again, if you're one, if you are looking to get a desktop computer. And you want something that will last you for years and can be easily upgraded or repaired and also repaired for cheaper. By all means, go with a custom-built computer from a local computer shop. Or heck, even go with a system from CyberPower or iBuyPower, one of those that builds computers with um, retail, or I guess I can say either retail or just... ATX compliant components, not this garbage here. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that wraps up for this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to your channel, and be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, Cube Comp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.